What's up, everybody? So I'm going to quickly just run through the pairs right now because the market's moving a lot this week and it really looks good. Um, I've gotten in a couple successful trades, but just not, I didn't catch all the ones that I should have caught. But either way, you know, it's going to be another opportunity. I'm not going to feel bad. I'm not going to chase any pairs. I'm not going to anxiously hop in a trade. I'm not going to do all the early on trader mistakes. I'm just going to take my time and I'm going to wait for some really good entries, which are probably going to be setting up here in a few days or even early next week. I mean, the market has moved a lot this week. Um, so we'll just start from the top. We'll run, try and run down pretty quickly, but you've got Australian dollar CAD. Um, um, now we're looking for a pullback. So all I'm looking for here is a pullback. I want to pull back to these highs. If I don't get it, it's no big deal. You could also be looking for an hourly pullback if you really want to enter a trade. Um, it's not necessarily an aggressive trade, but it's it's not as uh, consistent of trade as that H4 is going to prove to be. That four hour support and resistance zones are going to be much sturdier. Now, I'm not thinking we're going to get the pullback. I think it's just going to go straight to uh, monthly level right now, but that's okay. You know, if it goes to monthly, it's whatever. It's just, let's wait for a good entry. Um, going to out Swiss franc, we're just breaking through this monthly level. We actually do have a very clean uh, little four hour support resistance. So let's see if it's already pulled back and retested it. No, I mean, it tight retested. So. If we can actually get a nice little round out and retest of that zone, then that would be a great chance to long. Uh, let's see where we stand compared to the highs. We still have room uh, compared or, or in reference to the highs. So here's the highs. Yeah, we still have plenty of room to get into a long right here. Um, you know, if you entered somewhere around here and you had stops below these lows, and you came to those highs, you can pull out, you can at least remove your risk before you hit the highs and move stops to break even. And then if you punch through those highs, great. Um, and that would be, you know, you also have the option to just tighten your stops below these lows, below this uh, support zone, which would be a less structured stop loss. I mean, if you can have a market structure stop loss, that's gonna be preferable. And the market structure stop loss is gonna be down here below these swing lows, but, you don't have to necessarily do that if you're in a strong trend and you've got a monthly support. If I started closing below this monthly level and into this zone and like getting strong closes below this monthly level, then I would start to get bearish anyway. So uh, on an entry, I don't need to have my stops all the way down here. I'm going to start closing the trade if we get significant closes into this zone. So stops right here work. And then that that uh, put that sets you up for a nice little like almost two 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 to one risk reward, just depending on where you get your or one to two risk reward, uh, depending on where you get your entry. And so this could be a really nice trade. I'm going to set an alert for a pullback right here. So if it starts to dip back, it'll just tell me. And that's the way you, you do it so that you don't spend a ton of time monitoring it. You just set your alerts and then you glance at it when the alerts trigger um, and you keep updating the alert, you know. Uh, so Australian dollar Swiss franc, that looks good for a potential long if we get this tight pullback right here. And now we're going to move on. We're going to mark that. That's a really good one. Mark that green. It's a long potential. Um, golly, that'd be great. I'd be very happy. And I'm just going to put the, I don't know if I have high on that. Either way. So then we're going to move on to Australian dollar JPY. It's breaking through these highs. These highs are of interest. I want to mark these highs um, as a level, as some sort of level. Uh, I wanted to pull back yesterday, but you know, most of the time, if the market's trending hard, you're not going to get a ton of opportunity for a large rounded retest. So the tight retest are going to come into play more frequently. Um, like a tight retest, like where the market just punches through it slightly, comes back for a quick retest of that level. So boom, boom, and then it runs. So you won't normally in a strong trend get a full rounded bounce. And if you do, it's going to be not like a day or two. It could be like a week before it comes back to revisit, you know, that level. So 
just something to keep in mind. Like I'm, I've been looking the past couple of days for tight retest. Um, there's tight retest and there's rounded retest, and those are two different ways to enter the trade. Um, so I don't have anything here, but if it breaks above this monthly, and you know we get a little, a, a few closes, I'd like to get some some four hour closes above this level since it is a high. Um, but that could be a potential long. Uh, I'm not going to mark that one. I'm not as excited about that one, but it's still a good trade. And then here, same thing. You know, we had the strong level punch straight through it. Let's see if we got any retest. No, didn't really get any retest. It just ran through it. Um, so probably not going to get that pullback for a little while. I think this one's, yeah, it's got a lot of room to run to weekly. So we're, we're chill on that. We're chill. Um, nothing real interesting. What is all this junk? Arrow. Oh, I hate that arrow. And trend line. We're moving trend line. Don't like trend lines. Um, so Australian dollar NZD. Um, potentially continuing this bullish trend right now, but not at a point where I'm interested. It's going to definitely need to like claim this kind of resistance level and actually round out. It's going to have to, to round out for me to be interested in that because it's just been resistance too many times. But it's not that it's sorry. It's not that it's been resistance too many times. It's that these high upper wicks here, uh, they're going to act as resistance. And you can see it's already like broke above and then faked you out. And now it could potentially be coming back into this range. This is a range. Just bear in mind, like this is a potential range that could continue and we get a move all the way back down to the lows. Um, so I'm not really interested unless we get a nice round out um, and retest because of this extended high right there. So moving on, Cat Swiss Frank. Cat Swiss Frank looks like trash. Uh, you know, if it, we break down and we retest, then I'll be interested, but not until then. Uh, CAD JPY, this looks like it's about to make its break, but I'm sitting right below another resistance. So I'm kind of less inclined to take this. You can see I've already drawn, I drew this out for like you know, on the 19th, so it's 22nd. So three days ago, um, I think it's a Sunday review that I'd really rather have price come reclaim this weekly and then I will take a long at that weekly level. And you can see it is operating in a parallel channel. I do like parallel channels. They are extremely respected. They're so crucial. You can see that it's it's just respected this channel. It's beautiful. It respected it right here. It's probably gonna respect it again if we get up to this high, high of this range. Channels are respected very frequently. Uh, and they're, they're kind of like, they're, they are trend lines in reality. But anyway, so I am waiting for it to get above that weekly. I'll look for longs. Don't, uh, you know, I could, I could look for longs here. I just know for a fact that there's been this weekly support, support, resistance, resistance. So why would it not come back into play and support, support here? So now it's going to turn into resistance. I don't really want to long that, um, that hit on resistance. I'll be stuck. I can just range out at a slightly higher high or a slightly higher range. You know, we ranged here. I could hit here. And I could just range between those two zones. Um, so I'm just going to wait for that break. That's pretty easy. Waiting for the break's conservative. You don't have to wait for the break. Do whatever you want. Um, so on Euro out, it looks like we've broken this. We've retested. We're rejecting. We do have that long lower wick that got bought up. That's kind of not in your favor. So if you're going to short now, uh, Euro out, what just happened? Uh, if you're going to short right now, you know, that long lower wake does not increase your probabilities of success. That could mean that this candle right here that's starting to look bearish could get bought up and you can move back above and you could, uh, you know, start to break above that resistance. Uh, but even at the same time, you know, I've got support right here. I still am not in open air. That's what I keep referring to it as. You know, open air is when you get to like new lows. Here's new lows of the recent price action. Um, and this is still within this structure, you know, this whole structure right here, all this price action is happening. Like anything inside this range right here is inside that structure. And I'm not as interested if we, you know, breach this new low, then that could look pretty good, but we're not there yet. So not interested. Euro CAD, this was a funny one. I took a long, you see with my red arrows, but I closed it pretty quickly because of how violent that rejection candle was. And it actually worked out. I would have at least gotten take profit one in. Um, but we have this high. It's It's been consolidating for a really long time. You can see it's been consolidating since, you know, April, March, March, April-ish. Um, so 
we had that high right there and it acted as resistance, you know, clearly act, sorry, keep zooming out, acted as resistance, rejected, rejected, and potentially rejecting a third time. And it, it looks like it could break it, but you know, this came, they took out stops and then they immediately moved price to the high side or the market did. So uh, there's nothing here unless we get above these highs and we retest. Although then I'll be taking along right into weekly and I'm not as interested, but it doesn't look like price has thoroughly respected the weekly level. Um, that's another factor when you are monitoring or deciding whether you're going to enter trade that's right below uh, a weekly level or a monthly level. It's how tightly is that level respected in, in the recent price action. It's not that that level has not been significantly respected, but you can see we've chopped through it a few times. It, it was respected, but it, it has gotten kind of swung through. And even just a move that high above weekly could give us some significant profit. Um, so I'd probably be taking a long here if we if we breach this retest and bounce. That would be a really good long because this is a solid, very clear resistance, resistance. And then we'll see what's going to happen right now. So that could be a good trade. I'm not going to mark any alerts. I'll just keep an eye on it. Uh, actually, I lied. I'll mark an alert. Just see when it breaks out. Doesn't mean I'll be taking the trade then. Um, so Euro Swiss franc, Euro Swiss franc is sitting below a really crucial daily or, or multi-week or multi-month trend line. Um, I'm not super interested in it. We, in it, we took a long down here when it uh, had this bullish engulfing candle as support, and it seemed like it was breaching market structure, and then it moved up right to the 61.8 Fibonacci level, and it rejected. And so now we've kind of found support. I don't know where it found support. It's kind of a random point. Not a totally random point, but a pretty random point. I was looking for it to pull back to this range and I would have re-entered a long, at least partial position long. Uh, but right now there's nothing going on there. It's sitting at a resistance or not much room left to resistance. Um, Euro GBP is still in an uptrend, but it's looking pretty, pretty, uh, pretty ugly right now. So I'm not super interested in it. I'm just going to move on. Euro JPY, I took a long on this yesterday, and I unfortunately I only took a quarter percent quarter percent position on it, and took a long somewhere like right here in this candle, and so I've closed it, closed part of it here, closed part of it, closed the remainder of it right at this H4 resistance, but it's still moving up. I don't really care, um, but that's great. You know, it wasn't a big position, so that's that's is what it is. Uh, there's no trade right here unless we get a pullback. And even if we get a pullback, that's going to be a pretty significant pullback. That could take a week. That could take that could take a few days. I don't know. We're going to find out. But there's no trade right now. Um, Euro NZD uh, just kind of looks like poo, but it's in a downtrend. And if we can breach these lows and reject, oh my gosh, this will be a great trade, this entry right here. That would be a great trade. So we will look for that. We're going to stretch that to the side. And there you go, there's your, your support zone. But there's no trade right here in the middle of this range. Once again, although I put this, this uh, in fact, I'll just remove this. That just confuses people. If I'm inside, like I said, inside the structure on the left and price is trading, it's pretty much just trading in a range until we get outside that, that structure and outside this high swing low area. You know, we're just in a range all in here. So I'm not interested until we can get to that open air area. Um, and I think it's, do I have an alert set? I'm pretty sure I have an alert set. Yeah, I have an alert set for if it breaks out. Um, so Euro USD just ripping like a monster. The uh, COT report, the commitment of traders from the CFTC, uh, shows that large speculators are adding again to their positions. They should be. They're breaching highs. They've got an extreme adding to their long positions. So large speculators, people running the market, are adding to their long positions. So you should be looking for all longs right here. Um, you know, right now there's really no setup. Uh, you could take an hourly. You could go in here and you could zoom in to hourly if you want to take a trade. I'm probably not going to take that. I'm just going to wait for four hour to play out. But that is that is a valid trade. You know, you get a slight retest here. I might take it. I might take it. That's yeah, right up to monthly. Yeah, I'm going to put an alert. That's actually not a bad trade. 
So that's not a terrible trade in, in all reality. It's You don't have to do a full position size. If you're going to trade off this hourly, you could do a half position size. Uh, but that's up to you. I I generally am going to do full position sizes on H4 levels versus on H1 levels. Um, so I'm going to mark that as long. And we got the alert set. So now we're going to great British pound, Australian dollar. We're on the four hour. Uh, I was hoping to get a retest. It kind of did get a retest. Um, I guess I missed it. I don't know what time this was. 17, 5 p.m. Yeah, I was done yesterday. Oh, no, that closed at, yeah, I was definitely done by that time. Um, so, yeah, we didn't we didn't get a great opportunity to enter this trade. Here it was, actually. So it did come around. Uh, and reject. That was the entry at 21. So 21 was like 9 p.m. Yep, not trading at 9 p.m. That's not happening. Um, so it got a great rejection at 9 p.m., which I guess actually closed at 10 p.m., so definitely not trading it. And that was a good trade right there. That was a really clean trade. So we missed that, but that's okay. And so now we're just kind of looking for more of a rounded retest. But at the same time, when you get a rounded retest like this, yes, you can take the short, but it is bouncing off of a strong support level. So keep in mind, like, things that have broken down, you're looking for a retest like this, but they've broken down and they've bounced off of a weekly or a monthly level, they're going to have more force coming back. So there's going to be a higher probability that this rally coming back is, is going to change the trends or at least come up to test that, that high uh, to try and breach structure so we can you know continue to move up. So there is a chance. I'll switch Frank. Okay. Um, there is a chance that it comes all the way back up there. I'm not saying it's going to, but it could. And so I will probably be taking that short if we get up here. And I don't have my alert set. So I'm going to set my alert now. Alert set. Oh, these alerts are invaluable. You don't have to do a ton of work by monitoring. It's monitoring the price for you for your next potential setup. Uh, so alerts are crucial. Um, Alex, what did I put it on? Alex was Frank. Oh. One hour. Yeah, so one hour. So it's potentially pulling back here. I think I'd like it to pull back a little bit more. We'll go to 15 minute and really look at it. Um, yeah, this would be the trade. Come set another alert. It's telling me that we're pulling back. This will tell me when we hit that area. Back to four hour and, oh geez, I have no idea where I was. Um, Euro Swiss franc. Okay, so now we're on Great British Pound Swiss Frank. What a choppy mess. Uh, I tried to take a, a tight long here, and it did not work out yesterday. Um, that's, you know, that's is what it is. But I'll show you why I tried to take the long. And it was, and the British Pound US dollar actually ran, and I took this British Pound Swiss Frank, uh, and it did not run. I took the wrong pair, clearly. Uh, but I've moved this up since then, and... The support was like right here, and you can see that price in this candle and this long buy up, price kind of closed above, started to close above. Then we got this nice long buy up candle right here, and it showed that the market retested the level. The buyer stepped in, it was a tight retest, so I took a long right in that candle, and then it just immediately turned into a bearish engulfing. Uh, candle a very bearish candle showing that we were going to come back into this range and so i had my stops below these lows i had my stops below structure and i went ahead and closed early it was only a half position size because it was uh off of an h1 support level um and it was just so tight this was very tight trade but it's okay you know it, it closed back below we got our money back on our euro jpy trade Probably should have taken half position size instead of quarter position size, but that's okay. That's hindsight. It's, it's, it's all fake. Um, so anyway, lost our lost like you know 0.37% on that trade. Uh, but no trades to be taken right now. It's kind of in a messy range. Looks pretty ugly. I thought it was gonna break out yesterday. Um, this is going to close in 20 minutes, and that is it's not a terrible trade. No, the problem so the problem with trades like this though is, you know, you take this long right here, you're taking a long at resistance. There isn't any way to like say anything, but you're taking a long at resistance. So on GJ, 
Um, even though we've got this great bullish engulfing, you'd be longing into resistance. I will take this trade in 20 minutes if it closes right here above this lower time frame square. You can see I've gone ahead and I have marked out this lower time frame resistance, uh, like 15 minute hourly resistance. And if we can get a close above here, a really strong bullish engulfing, then yeah, I will, I will take that long for certain, even though I'm at resistance, because a bullish engulfing coming off that retest, uh, that very tight retest. Uh, bullish engulfing candles are powerful. So that's all I'll say. I'm probably going to take this long and move it up to the high side. And it probably will only be a half percent risk because we're sitting at resistance. So you got to pick and choose your battles. I'm going to take a half percent risk if we get this close above this resistance in 19 minutes. And um, yeah, yeah, that, that's that's a good trade. So I need to go ahead and put an alert or tag on that. GJ, that's a good looking trade. Um, like I said, half percent risk. That's the battle I've chosen to take if I get the close that I want. Um, so Great British Pound, New Zealand Dollar. The Great British Pound, New Zealand Dollar potentially coming in for short, but will be right at weekly. So it depends on how tightly, uh, how tight this retest is. If it's tight enough that I can get a two to one risk reward ratio, or, or sorry, one to two, or even a one to 1.5 risk reward ratio uh, for my initial target, then I'll probably do that. So what you don't want to do is, uh, when you take a, when you see a breakdown like this and you lose the lows, so we've lost the lows and we're going to look for a tight retest. This isn't really going to be a large rounded retest of this level. So I'm going to be looking for a tight retest of this level. Um, you don't want to take a short until the four hour has closed. So you want to see a four hour close below that, that's that lowest point, that, that all time low or whatever you call it, uh, that swing low. You have to see that four hour close because otherwise you could enter based on the one hour and then the four hour, or you could enter based on the one hour before the four hour has closed. The price could get bought up on the hourly. And then what you're actually left with is a swing failure pattern on the four hour, which would be very bullish for, not necessarily very bullish, but it would show that there's gonna be probably a push to the high side, at least back to those resistance uh, points. So you don't want this lower wick to get left down here on the four hour because a lot of people are going to be looking at that four hour chart. And, uh, you know, you don't want to be zoomed in on this one hour, not recognizing what candle is actually forming on the four hour because that four hours kind of going to dictate whether this is an actual breakout or whether they're just going to swing the lows really quickly, sweep the lows and then push to the high side. So be careful of that. Always monitoring the four hour candle and making sure you get closes above resistance or uh, below support. So let's see here. Oh yeah, that's another trade I was looking at. This is another British pound trade, GU. And GU clearly is getting bought up here and it looked pretty good, but it's right into resistance. Even if I took it to the highs, it's right into the highs. Actually the highs are, are pretty far off, but no, I gotta have my entry up here. So yeah, I think it's GU is a little too tight uh, risk reward ratio wise to want to take a trade. A um, little too tight for me. But it's a good setup. I mean, it was, a, it was a good setup, barring like the fact that there's resistance right here and you're at a weekly level. Um, this is a what you want to see, you know, come rounded retest of this support area. And then you get that strong bullish, almost a bullish engulfing. It's probably going to be an inside candle, but we got 16 minutes to find out. But if it's a bullish engulfing, you know, that's super powerful. Price will probably continue up, uh, but very tight, like I said, on the risk reward. Um, and then NZD CAD actually looks great, but NZD CAD actually looks great, but we missed that tight retest entry. You can see that the market broke out, retested the zone and has moved up. So we've missed that entry. Um, that happened like early, early this morning. That happened at 3 a.m. Yeah, I wasn't up for 3 a.m. and really 4 a.m. But by the time the candle closed at 5 a.m., you would have known uh, this this buy up wig, this move away. That would have been a good move. Uh, here, this is when you'll zoom in on 15 minutes, see the actual like bounce and retest. Um, because you can see here, here's 15 minute candles, and it's very clear you've got this resistance structure. The price comes retest it, pushes away. When you get this candle right here that pushes away, 
uh, that's when you'll trigger an entry. So, you know, you should have something like this stops below these lows, account for spread, the spread of the market. And, you know, there's your long, that, that'd be great. Um, and you'd already be almost at one to one, but I'm not, I'm not gonna take it right where it is, right where it stands, I'm not gonna take it. Oh, let me turn this off. Pleasure, stop, stop messing with me, jeez. Mute, okay, thank you, jeez. Sorry, I have like an active background. Um, so the active background like makes noise. Um, so I got nothing here unless I get a nice little pullback after this four hour close. I'd like this four hour close to be here, then get a pullback, then bounce. Oh gosh, that'd be beautiful. Um, so let's see, this NZD JPY, you can see we had a very tight, but it missed the retest um, yesterday. Right now, there's not really a trade. We're coming into resistance. Um, it's coming into resistance, and so, you know, I'm looking for that pullback, but I, I'm not actually looking. Sorry, sorry. Just messed with me, distracted me. So these highs um, are coming into play. So if we do pull back, I'm not interested in it. I don't I don't want to long back into highs. Uh, probably looking for longs if we can like get above these highs and then come and retest those highs, you know, something like that. Then moving on to NZD USD. Um, we have breached the highs. We're probably just going to pump straight into monthly, and then we'll look for a move back into that support zone. I was looking for it yesterday, but like I said, it doesn't happen that frequently if you're in a strong trend that you get a rounded retest or, or a decently rounded retest within like a 24-hour period. It could take days, even weeks. Um, so if we pull back there, that'd be good. Uh, SGD, JPY, probably gonna break above. It's looking strong, it's holding these higher lows. So this is showing strength in the market. You know, we got this trend line up, It's really kind of like an ascending triangle formation, um, pretty obvious ascending triangle. So the market's probably gonna pop, but I'm gonna wait until we can get above this zone like I drew a few days ago. Um, I'm gonna wait till we can get above that zone and retest it and run and it'll probably be a tight retest once again one of those tight retests right about around this range that might be your only chance to get in the trade but it, it should high probability there's not a lot of resistance in this structure it should move up to those highs high probability not that it's going to um, but yeah that that's a clear sending triangle um so and i probably got this part pretty tight either way so that's to be good trade. Do I have an alert set? I don't have an alert set. I'm gonna put an alert on those highs. USD CAD, uh, you can see that it came and it rejected and it's probably gonna move down to these lows, but it never got a clear test. Uh, you know, our price never came all the way up. So it didn't, did not, even though trading view is glitching out, um, didn't get all the way up there. But it looks good right now. I'm not gonna take the trade. It's not tight enough. Um, but it's probably going to move down to weekly. Uh, U.S. dollar Swiss franc, we are in monthly, not interested. If we bounce off of this, definitely not taking that long uh, because bouncing off a of monthly, like the strongest of all supports outside of like yearly or quarterly. Um, so yeah, not interested in that. Nothing there. And this is a joke. I'm not even... Look at all my trades on, on this, just dot, 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 yeah. Uh, not going to take any of these. Not going to take this, so I'm, I'm done with that. Unless we breach all the way below here and reject, which is weeks away. And then Zar JPY, dude, this has just continued to run. It shocked me that it took took this uh took this trend line resistance and it flipped it into support, and now it's kind of bullishly breaking above. But I'm, I mean, can't long right at the highs. That's a terrible idea. So I wasn't going to enter this either way. I'm in this clear resistance zone. But hey, man, this has been strong. This has been, hey, man, woman, whatever. Uh, this has been strong. It looks great in regards to market structure. You know, you can see tons of support to resistance flips in here. And it, that's just pretty cool to see. So, you know, that's my market scan. I've got a few pairs that I marked while we went through this. And I'll be looking for entries. And the market's going to, or the four hour candles are going to close in about 11 minutes. And the reason you don't have to stare at the chart all the time too, 
is because you need confirmation on closes. So, uh, you know, looking at the chart at the half hour, it doesn't really do you good. Looking at it like five minutes before four hour closes, knowing when the four hours are closing. Four hour candles closing at 9 a.m., closing at um, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1 p.m., 5 p.m., you got 9 p.m., um, just on cycle. So knowing when the four hour candles close, checking the market on four hour close times. And if you're looking for, you know, there's certain trades that you're looking for an hourly close, then you're only needing to check the market like five minutes before the hourly close so that you can get that slight edge or, you know, four minutes before the hourly close and then scan the pairs where you were looking for some confirmation on an hourly close. So checking the market at like, you know, 937 doesn't really do you a lot of help or do, do you a lot of good. Like what's going to do you good is making sure that these closes are solid. So on the hour and every four hours. Uh, but that's just my suggestion. If you like this video, uh, give it a like. If you want to subscribe and see more of these videos or more educational content, I'm going to be putting out a video regarding uh, psychology and all these different ways you need to you know, change your psychology in order to become a profitable trader. Uh, you really can't get upset at adversity when you're trading. You just you know roll with the flow, go with the flow. and You can't be in a hurry to make money. You just have to let the money come to you. Uh, and that's how you make trading work. So y'all have a great day. Good luck with your trading week and I will see you soon.